Today, I'm going to be talking about using the skid plate. This is a common size obstacle that might put you on the skid plate if you don't give it enough gas. So you get here, you try to give it gas, it's just gonna spin. Especially today, the logs are a little bit slick, so you're not gonna get much traction. So a common thing for a lot of people to do, put both feet down, push the bike off of it. But there's actually no need to dab. When you're on the skid plate, it balances for you, so you can take your time, set yourself up to get off the log, Stay clean. To do that, you just move your hips from a little bit over the rear fender to forwards towards the handlebars. And when you get about here, that's when you stop your hips and push with your hands forward on the grips to try to get the rear tire up and over the log. Right when you push forward, that's when you give it a little bit of throttle and slip the clutch. If you just barely get the skid plate on it, you want to go forward a bit first, slide forward so the rear tire is a little bit closer to the log. That way you don't have to move quite so far. And it's just a little movement, only a foot or so with your hips, then it goes directly into your hands. It's all about that timing. Hips to hands, along with the throttle, and it'll get you out of some situations that might otherwise cause you to dab. This log is quite a bit bigger, and it's at quite a bit of an angle. So preferably, you would actually not want to skid plate this one. But if you're not comfortable enough yet with holding pressure, and you can't carry the front wheels to the ground, skid plate might be your only option. So if you have to skid plate an angled obstacle, when you hit it, the skid plate is going to land, hit, and pitch the bike sideways. It's going to want to throw you left. You'll probably end up taking a dab your first tries. That's okay. But in order to fix that, when the skid plate lands, you have to adjust your body to compensate for it. So you get your right knee out and get your body over to the right side of the bike. That way when it lands and the bike pushes sideways, you're still centered over the top of it. Since this log is big enough that both tires are off the ground, it doesn't take much effort to push the bike forward and continue rolling down. If you have to skid plate an angled log, it's typically better to do it a bit quicker, meaning as soon as your skid plate lands, be ready to push the bike forward and roll on off of it. The longer you stay on the obstacle, especially if it's slick like this, it might give you a greater chance of dabbing, so you're better off to land, push, and go. You also want to put your weight almost all on the high side foot peg and the high side grip. So I'm really stomping on the right foot peg and pushing hard on the right grip, pulling up slightly on the left grip to keep the bike straight and pointed in the direction I want to go. When things start to get a bit more angled like this, you really want to avoid using the skid plate altogether. If you do hit it up here, chances are you're going to get kicked right very quickly, then there's no place for the front tire to go, so you might go over the handlebars, or at least get kicked so far off your line, you could go over a gate, get a five. So your best bet when things start to get angled is to hold pressure and avoid using the skid plate at all costs. If you're on something completely square, it's going to take a little bit more effort from your body to get the rear tire up. The front end is going to be sitting higher, and you don't have that downwards momentum you do on most logs. So it takes a bit more effort, and you can't move your body as far back to start with. If you go too far back, before you come forward, you might fall off the obstacle. So you really have to start standing almost straight up and down. You also want to be actually on your linkage, even off of your skid plate. So you want to bring the bike as far forward as you can first, just by hopping forward, holding up with your ankles, trying to scoot the rear tire all the way into the obstacle. Now that I'm set up, I can start standing just about straight up, and then I'm going to come forward quite a bit further, get my head over the front axle, and my legs might slam into the handlebars, but that just means I'm going far enough. So now I'm gonna jump forward, and I'm really gonna pull up with my ankles. Before, you can just push with your hands. Now, you really have to grip with your ankles, lift that rear tire up, slip the clutch, and give it some throttle. Again, this is so much about timing. You move your body forward first, then you jump up, while slipping the clutch, giving it some throttle, gripping with your ankles to help lift the rear, and pulling up the handlebars to try to get some forward momentum. Once the rear tire is almost on top, you can push the bike forward with your hands, which will put your body a little bit further back over the rear tire, and hopefully push the bike up over the top of it. Sometimes you can get away with using your toes to push off the rock and lift up, but I always try to minimize that, just because you never know if you're gonna get called out on it. Here I have an example of when using the skid plate is the best option. The line is over this chunk, tight turn in here before the sticks, and back out that way. If you hold pressure over this and bring the front end way up, no matter where you set it down, you're going to land with too much momentum, and you're gonna blow through the sticks and get a five. So the best option is go onto the skid plate, inch your way down as slow as you can, start turning the front tire and hopping the rear tire over to get in this little gap since there isn't enough room for a full bike to roll out. You have to hop while you're still on the chunk, then set up and continue on out. 
The only other option I see is to get up onto the rear tire and do a big flip turn 90 degrees, land down in the bottom and continue out. But if you're still watching this, chances are you're probably not ready for that. I personally don't really like using the skid plate. I try to avoid it whenever possible, but there are certain times when it's the best option and you just have to use it. So you should get pretty comfortable getting on, getting off, and knowing when to use and when not to use the skid plate. For me, I think it's most fun to use it doing a rail slide.